I said, I don't have any. <laughs> and he said, you can't start a company without any assets. And I said, well, I don't have any. And he says, whose toolbox is that over there? And I said, that's mine. He said, okay, that's the company's, and that's $500 worth. Is that what you <laughs> for our assets at day zero. Okay. So, you know, I just started, uh, and I, I could do, if I got some consulting business, uh, then I would consult a little less to, uh, to um, um, you know, digital. So, you know, uh, with this company was profitable all the time. I decided to train a bank. I had been in, in Europe while I was at BBN, and, and there was a guy who cheated uh, a bank there by pretending he was a member of the family that owned Fiat. And, um, you know, he, uh, what happened is I saw this picture of some gendarmes carrying this guy off, and uh, the caption said, but he was staying at the George Sank Hotel. And um, what it was, was a guy came into this bank and said, I'm, you know, one of the Fiat family people, and he borrowed some money, then he borrowed more money, and then he borrowed more money, 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 and then the guy at the bank sees a picture of him in the paper as the terror of Monte Carlo, who bets the limit on the number, which is 30 to 1 odds at roulette. So, uh, in any case, I had this idea, my God, what made the banker give him the money? And I analyzed that very carefully, and I decided I was going to train a bank. So I called a bank and got a guy to come in, and I, the way I trained him was every month I told him what I was going to do the next month, and I did it. In other words, <laughs> I was a bit calculated in order to make it happen, but I did. Okay. So and the reason that was it turned out to be very important because when um, later on I got some business, we had to, you know, we needed the bank. Okay. So I'm going to just run on. One day I get a phone call from someone who says, hey, I'm at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute and we hear you're, you know, you're out not working at BBN, we need to hire someone. So I said, well, I'm not for hire, but I'll come down. Then they called me and said, will you uh, give a ride to someone who's also coming down to Woods Hole? So, okay, they gave me the name of a person. I drove over to Harvard University and picked this guy up. We start driving down to Woods Hole. So he turned out to be a very interesting guy. Uh, like me, he wasn't a college graduate, but he was a professor at Harvard. I thought that was interesting. So, uh, and he, his name was Henry Stommel, and he's telling me about oceanographics and so on. And by the time we got to Woods Hole, I had described how, from what he told me about of what he called a vortex ocean model, that we could program that up on a PDB-1 computer, and they could have it... Uh, display ocean currents on the screen of a computer, which was novel in those days. And so by the time we got to Woods Hole, I got a, he said, we'll give you a $10,000 contract to build, write that program. That was my first outside contract, uh, $10,000. Today would be like maybe 100 to 150,000. Okay, so we got that contract. Now here's how we got into film. At Woods Hole, they showed me the Richardson current meter. In those days, um, there were no computer chips and so on. So they made something to go down in the ocean to see, they, they discovered there were ocean currents that were not at the surface, but down deep. And the ocean at the surface may move this way, but down deep it may move that way or something. So they, um, they had these meters, which would, it was like a uh, six foot long steel pipe, and it measured how fast the ocean current was going, and which way, and recorded it on 16 millimeter film, with little tiny lights and, and uh, 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 little fiber optic things and to get, move the lights from the compass to the, so on, it was all very mechanical and so on. And then they built a machine to read that film. I looked at the machine to read the film, and I, I looked at it, and I said, that'll never work. And they said, you know, who are you? And of course it'll work, and so on and so forth. So I shrugged. OK. So some months later, they call me up and say, it didn't work. <laughs> and you said you could uh, make something to fix it, uh, to, to read it. 
So here's a very, I, I have to tell you this, but this is insanely funny, okay? To me at least, okay. <laughs> so, I decide I'm gonna make a film reading. And here's how I'm gonna do it. You know, I'm gonna take a regular, uh, I knew that there was a, a 16 millimeter projector you could rent from a company. Uh, and it had, it could stop. And then you could say advance one frame by clicking, and it would just advance one frame, you know, one at a time. So I thought, uh-huh. Say I take the light bulb out and put a photomultiplier in, and I point it at the screen of the computer. Then the light will come from the screen, go through the lens, be focused on the film, someone go through the film to the photomultiplier, and uh, I would be able to tell how much light got through, and we could write a program to do the rest. That was my idea, okay? And since it pulled it down one frame at a time, I figured if I could mill out the little gate that held the film so the computer could see above the frame and below it, so it, when it pulled it down, it could figure out what was lost, it could do it all, okay? Not having any money, we rented that <laughs> projector. And I got digital to use their milling machine to mill it out. And, uh, but I needed, and I bought the photomultiplier tube, and I got Ben Gurley to design the circuitry and connect it to the computer. But um, the, um, uh, let's see, what was the, well, okay, so to make a long story short, we, uh, we got that to run. And that, uh, oh, uh, there, there's this one thing. I got the photomultiplier tube, but no one had the connector. A photomultiplier tube was like a vacuum tube, but it had like 16 pins and a very odd connector. And I thought, oh, the Lincoln Labs has this electronics uh, warehouse like inside with parts for everything. So I called someone since I used to work there and it said, look, do me a favor, sneak into the parts area. Take that part and just give it to me. And I've ordered one, but I'm not gonna get it for a while. And when I get it, I'll give it to you and you can put it back. So it's not actually a theft. Okay? <laughs> and he said, okay, I'll do it. But he asked me, why do you want it? And I told him, well, I'm doing this stuff for Woods Hole and I need it to meet some film and blah, blah, blah. No one had ever read film with a computer up till then, I thought. Okay, so he gives me the part. We get it going right away, and we're reading this film. And, you know, it turned out that that solved that problem. But meanwhile, this, this very funny thing happened, and this is just fake, okay? Someone from Lincoln Labs found out about all this. And someone called me and said, hey, you, you're reading some kind of film? Is that what you use that thing for? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, we tried to read some film, so we built a gadget and did the same thing you did. We pointed it at the, at the screen of the computer and so on, but they can't make the software work. Could you? Okay, so I say, well, <clears throat> you know, come down and tell me about it. Okay, so they come down, and what happens is this. Uh, they... The, there's some army people and they have a radar that's looking at a missile coming in and records on film. It's the only way you can record things in those days, an oscilloscope on film. And uh, they asked, could we read it? And uh, so to make a long story short, we signed a contract for X bucks. I think it was 10,000 again, that number kept coming up. <laughs> and uh, they said, they kept emphasizing, we're in a great hurry, a great hurry, great hurry, okay. So we, we signed this contract on Friday, okay. So I told all the guys who worked with me then, we had quite a, uh, you know, half a dozen then, look, we gotta get this done quickly, so we camped there for the weekend at work. We had cots, we didn't go home. We worked all weekend long. We got it off, got their device hooked to our computer so it was for 35 millimeter film. And we wrote the programs, we made the programs work, 
And on Monday morning, I called him up and said, hey, can you come down? And he came down, and we showed him what was working. I thought he would be overjoyed. They were angry because they said, you've cheated us. You know, this was like, you know, 100000 or $150,000 today. And here, just, you know, they said, you've done nothing, you know, and you, we have to pay you 10000 bucks. Okay, so I, I pointed out, I got our, our time sheets. And at our regular consulting rates, we, you know, we had about four guys working on it at every hour the whole weekend, and we got it done. So they got the Army to agree to buy one for $500,000, okay? That was the PFR-1. The bank I had been training financed us. <laughs> and we built the PFR-1 and we're off and running. So, that's, that's a nice thing. What yeah. happened to the 10 cent Coke machine? <laughs> <laughs> Probably in the archives. <laughs> How about another round of applause? Shortly, and Teresa, go ahead. In the meantime, you should probably talk with those people who are near where you're sitting. Don't go too far from your table.